Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, this is episode 29, I think it is, um, or covering uh, the various engine component measurements and checks that we need to do on that RAV4 engine. Uh, when approaching the end of all the checks, I think we've got this one and two more others to go, and on this particular check, we're going to check for crankshaft run out. Okay. Now, to do that, crankshaft run out, you're going to need a magnetic base for your DTI. You're going to need a DTI gauge too, and a pair of decent V-blocks as well. Now, I've got it all set up. The crank's obviously out of the block, and I'm very fortunate here to have a really good strong steel bench. It's really a welding bench, but it's really strong. Uh, the top plate's about eight millimeters thick, so there's very, very, well, there's no movement on the bench whatsoever. And I've got the V-blocks v clamped down onto the bench and the DTI in position. Now, the DTI I've used is slightly different to the one I just showed you, because it needs to have a really long plunger on it to get down between the webs. Um, so, the specification for this particular engine, for the RAV4 3S FE engine, is 0 0.06 millimeters permissible maximum runout. So let's see what we get. Now, just to show you the setup of the DTI gauge, the DTI gauge needs to sit on the center crankshaft main journal. Okay, so you've got journal number one, two, three, Four, and of course journal 5. So journal 5 is sat on that v-block and journal number 1 is sat quite neatly on that v-block. Now notice that the v-blocks are snug to one side of the journal and that's because there's a whopping great oil feed hole in the middle. So you've got to keep your v-blocks away from those oil holes otherwise you're going to get a really crappy reading that will mean nothing. So, sit your V-blocks away from those oil supply holes, those galleries, and your DTI, just looking down here to show you, your DTI needs to run, ideally, where's my finger, ideally on the wear surfaces of the journal. Because don't forget, on the actual, um, on the actual shell, there's a groove in the middle of the shell for the oil to do to run round and disperse through the bearing. If you look over here in the in the actual block, get to focus, you'll see what I mean. So if the engine, you know, the wear contact points are going to be where the actual white metal of the shell um, you know runs on the journal. Now obviously it shouldn't really touch the journal at all, but when your engine's cold, of course there will possibly be a very small amount of contact until oil pressure's built up. And that's what causes the wear on the journal. So make sure you position the needle of your DTI obviously on a wearing surface on the journal. If you put it bang in the middle you're not going to get a very good reading because that section of the, of the journal doesn't really wear very much. Okay so the first job is to zeroize the gauge and you can see you can rotate the outer until you get it about on the zero. And yes it's really really fiddly. Now, to help with the accuracy, you want to try and minimize the lengths of the arms for your DTI. You don't want it hanging off a great big long arm, otherwise you're going to get lots and lots of movement. You can see when I move it up and down, we've got movement each way. So if you can try and minimize that and keep the whole thing pretty well contained, it's going to help to improve the accuracy of the reading. Now, on this DTI, each segment is worth 0 0.01 millimeters. So now, once it's all set up, all we need to do is rotate the crank and basically see how much movement there is in total on that needle. Now, it might go either side of the zero. It might go off to the left for a while and then flick over to the right. And it's the total distance of throw of the needle that we need to, need to make a record of. Okay, so as we slowly turn the crank, making sure that the DTI as well doesn't crash into any of the webs, that would give us, obviously, a false reading. Okay, so we're pretty much up to 0 0.01 going over to the right. There we go. You just got to take it nice and slowly. You don't want any 
swift movements on this. At some point it will go back to zero. He says. Oh, even less. Look at that. Okay, so I think it's pretty fair to say that we've got less than 0 0.01 millimeters of run out on this crank. Very, very good reading, actually. It's probably one of the best parts of this engine. Okay, and just to prove that that needle can move either way, again, I can move that up and down so you can see that it's not against its stop in either direction. So we'll go around again, it's on zero. We'll do one more rotation just to double check we're getting the, a reasonable reading. Yep, yeah, back to the one again. Excellent. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Okay, let's have a chat about that one. Okay, so basically crankshaft run out. You need to make sure that wherever you do this test, you're not going to get any kind of flex on the bench. And a lot of modern workshop benches now are the thin tin tops on the bench. You know, they're only two, maybe three or four mil thick steel. It's just not enough. You know, if you set everything up and then you push down on your bench close to the DTI, you're probably going to get a huge change in the readings on the DTI gauge. If that happens, forget it. It's pointless. The test that you're doing, not worth doing. Um, but you will need a DTI with a, uh, a long pointer on it, you know, a long uh, stylus, I think you'd call that, wouldn't you? A nice long stylus that's going to get right down between the the webs to get to that center bearing, that center journal. And unfortunately, my own DTI, which is meant more for on the lathe, to be honest, has a very different style, works in a different way, doesn't work for that particular test. So I've had to borrow some kit from work just to do this particular this particular test. And um, yeah, DTIs are pretty cheap. You can get them off the net now, and you know they're actually quite accurate for what they are. Uh, obviously, the more money you spend, the better one you get. Now, um, as regards spec, the maximum uh, run out permissible on that crank, like I said earlier on, is 0 0.06 millimeters. We had basically 0 0.01 mil, so we're well within spec. And the condition of those journals, they're all good. I'm very happy with that. So the crankshaft itself is fine. No problems at all. Wish I could say the same about the rest of the engine. But anyway, um, there will be a summary video that I'll do once I've finished all of these inspections, these measurements. And then we'll be able to tally up and just see how much work's involved to get this engine back to spec. Okay, well, if you found that video uh, helpful, then that's great. If you've got any questions or comments, do leave them down the bottom, and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Um, if you'd like to subscribe to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel, then great. It'd be fantastic to have you on board. Um, there's not that many subscribers. I think we're up to about 185 now, 180 subscribers, which is great. It's good to have you on board. Um, more the merrier. If you do subscribe, why not click on the little gear icon as well next to the subscribe button and turn on notifications. And that way you'll get a notification as and when any new videos get uploaded to the channel. And there's usually maybe around about five every week at the moment. Okay, well my name's Andy Young and uh, you've been watching the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Cheers, over and out.